24-7 World Radio. Well, there's John Phil's back with a broadcast of this first hour. And uh, I know there are some of you who do not believe that the Pope of Rome runs this country. My question is, what's your problem? Are you that much of a bigot to not come to the realization that that man who claims to have the right to rule all nations, believing that Isaiah 60 applies to him, that the nation that will not serve me shall perish? Tell me, what's wrong with you? And I'm not talking just Roman Catholics. I'm talking you deceived, prostituted Protestants, prostituted Baptists. I mean, what in the name of Jesus Christ is wrong with you people? I can understand a Catholic believing it, but what's wrong with you Protestants and Baptists? What's wrong with you Muslims and Jews? What's wrong with you Buddhists and Hindus? What's wrong with you people? Have you lost the ability to think? Are you incapable of rational thought anymore? Are you incapable of observing true history are you not willing to lift a finger to go to the library and read the book of Laurentiis uh, of the Middle Ages or H.C. Leah's The History of the Inquisition? Are you too lazy just to consult the history in the past of what was done? Do you realize that Inquisition raged for 600 years? Do you realize it consumed approximately 68 million people? over a 600 year period do you have any concern about the past do you ever ask the question why are we here at this time in history what has brought us to this place are you in are you just too lazy or are you just too careless all you care about is it your money. We have to make more. We have to just give ourselves totally to commerce, and we don't have ten minutes for reflective thought. Because if you are, you are little more than a beast. Because that's what an animal does. Every time I leave to come to the office in the morning, it's a couple of stray cats. The first thing they are is right at the door, wanting to get fed. That's how. That's how we become. We're nothing but a bunch of stray cats. All we want to do is be fed. So we work all the time so we can buy food and go out to eat and have pizza and, and have bread and circuses and, 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 and football everywhere and baseball everywhere and all these sports that preoccupy us. And as long as we have a beer or something, plenty to eat, we're okay. Everything's okay, right? I'm okay. You're okay. We have become beasts. We ought to be spending time in libraries. We ought to be spending time checking out documentaries. We ought to be seeing just what's going on here. You Chinamen ought to say, what's going on here in China? What has happened to my China? Who did this to us? Who put us under communism? Who's converting our whole country into one great big commercial whorehouse so that all of our people become in the military? Exactly has been done in America. Who did this to us? What about you Russians? You Russians at one time had a glorious, wonderful Russian culture, language, history, beautiful white people, white Russian people. What has happened to Russia? Who did this to us? Who broke us financially? Who's built this huge military? Where'd we get the technology for this? Where did Putin come from? Who does he really serve? Does he serve the Russian people? Does he serve us or does he serve somebody else? How did he get in power? Who runs the KGB that he was a part of for years? Still is. Now it's FSB, SVR. Who ran it? Who, how was that founded? Is there any connection between the FSB and the CIA? I mean, could it be possibly true that they work together? Could it be true that the Rush Chinese Secret Intelligence Service and the FSB and SVR and the FBI and the CIA and NSA at the top and, and, and a handful of a few men all work together for the Pope? 
Is that possible? I prove in my book it is. It's absolutely true. And I'll debate anybody about it. Because you see, dear friend, they don't want you to know. They don't want you to know that your government is completely in the hands of the Pope of Rome thanks to a hundred years of conspiracy led by the white power structure working for the Pope of Rome out of London, Washington, and New York. Those three cities of sin under powerful cardinals of Rome overseeing the business and the military for the Pope of Rome overseeing NSA and CIA. Don't you think for one minute the Archbishop of, of uh, Washington, D.C. doesn't oversee the CIA and his Jesuits of Georgetown and John DeGoya, the Knight of Malta, head of Georgetown University. They're all working for the Pope. They're all enforcing his temporal power. And we need to wake up. Because when we wake up to that fact, then will God send a great awakening. He will not send a great awakening as long as we're fast asleep in the arms of the Pope on his drugs, on his prescription drugs and street drugs. The Pope runs it all. He runs the pharmaceutical industries, and he runs all the street drugs of all the dope addicts and dopers uh, made that way by the mafia and the CIA working for the Pope of Rome. A white power structure submitting whites and blacks in America to the temporal power of the Pope, putting us on drugs, breaking us financially, fomenting race war with Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson and Louis Unfarrakhan, and it goes on and on and on. And Barry Davis Obama ultimately to end in right-wing fascism. I just checked out the Provost Marshal. You know what his symbol is? One of his symbols? And his symbol is the Provost Marshal of the United States Army? A bundle of rods with an axe head protruding. You know what that is? It's a sign of Roman fascism. You got the same thing at the United States tax court. A bundle of rods with an axe head protruding. Fascism. You got the same thing on the 1936 dime of FDR on the, on the back side of it. Is a bundle of rods with an axe head protruding. Fascism. Roman. All these military flags with this Roman eagle on top of it. It's a Roman eagle for the Caesar. The president's commander-in-chief is an American Caesar. And that's why they play hail to the chief every time you get a new president because he's being hailed to the chief as commander in chief the new American Caesar and that American Caesar is going to do exactly what he's told by the Jesuits who are his Roman Praetorian Guard that's America that's the empire of 14th Amendment Holy Roman Holy Roman 14th Amendment socialist communist right wing fascist American Empire of today Steven Seagal said in one of his movies, it's an empire. That's right, it's an empire, Stephen. Why don't you start talking about it and doing something about it? You think you're going to be safe because you're a famous actor? Anybody you think you're going to be safe because you're famous? Listen, you're going to do what you're told to do or you're not going to be famous anymore. It's an empire. And you know how this place got to become an empire? You know how this glorious republic of white Protestant men and Baptist men that was founded by them on their blood and with their fortunes, and they gave their last full measure to establish our glorious American Federal Republic of the United States, which was brought into national uh, citizenship in 1868. Do you know what they gave to establish this limited republic? That would be a new world order. That means the government was not attached to any religion, any organized religion, any church. That's new. That's new in human history. It never happened before 1776. Rhode Island was the first nation in world history that had true religious 
liberty, thanks to the Baptists of Rhode Island. This, this didn't happen before. How did this glorious federal republic of our great white southern father, George Washington the Baptist, who was baptized by his favorite chaplain, Baptist preacher and major John Gano, or Captain John Gano, his chaplain in the revolution, baptized in 1783 with a hundred witnesses, our glorious George Washington, who didn't go into a Masonic lodge but once or twice in the last 30 years of his life. Do you know what he paid? He was poisoned for this. He was murdered for it by Tobias Lear V and then bled to death by Dr. James Crack. George Washington was murdered for establishing a nation of heretics, a heretic nation with a doctrine of Satan called the United States Constitution, as the Pope called it, the doctrine, the, a document of Satan. Limiting powers of men in government? Why, what a blasphemy! We believe in divine right, unlimited powers of those who are in government, and anybody who denies that is some kind of a heretic or, or bigot unworthy of life. You advocate limited government, you advocate states' rights, you advocate that government's created for specifically certain limited reasons, and man, you are a, you are a black dog, black sheep of the family. Why, man's basically good, therefore let him give him all the power so he can do all kinds of good things. Are we crazy? Evolu the horrible, damnable doctrine of evolution. Man is getting better every day in every way when man is totally depraved and gets worse all the time when he's not influenced by the written word of God. That's history. That's a fact. That can be proven. So now, how did this get this way? On the inauguration of Franklin Dandelow Roosevelt on March 4, 1933, this is the first thing that came out of his mouth. Meanwhile, there's at least eight Knights of Columbus behind him, prancing around with their capoots, their ha their hats on, with a white fringe on their hats, letting all the Roman Catholics know that we're behind this Episcopalian Protestant who's a 32nd degree Freemason. And the first things out of FDR's mouth, the first sentence, this is a day of national consecration. What? What? Consecrating a nation to whom? Let's check out what the word consecration means. If you go to the word Black's Fifth Dictionary, and you look at the word consecrate on page 275, read in ecclesiastical law. That's church talk. This is the language of churchmen in the Roman Catholic institution, particularly. In ecclesiastical law, to dedicate to sacred purposes as a bishop by imposition of hands or a church or churchyard by prayers, consecration is performed by a bishop or archbishop. FDR was acting as an archbishop, consecrating, consecrating this country to the Pope of Rome. You like that? Do you like that he consecrated America to the Pope of Rome? Do you like that he consecrated you to the Pope of Rome? He set you apart. This nation is dedicated to the Pope. And by the way, there was this one Jesuit sitting up there with him when he was inaugurated, off to his right, sitting down with a Beretta on. The Jesuits and Knights of Columbus there with FDR, having a ball! knowing that they're going, they would take this country practically on the 4th and they would legally take it on the 9th and it will all be theirs lock, stock and barrel fulfilling what Archbishop Quigley said in Chicago in about 1902 he said in 20 years America will rule the world and when America rules the world the Roman Catholic Church will rule the world listen folks 
The papacy rules the governments of the world through this de facto military government that was established on March 9, 1933 here in Washington with the consent of all the people and the consent of their congressmen because little did they know what was really happening when they were busy starving to death in the Great Depression.